Thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today, I am very pleased to be able to review for you the deluxe set of Hackney Diamonds by Rolling Stones. This deluxe set comes in a CD Blu-ray format, and it also features a book, which in my opinion is succinct, but informative and valuable. It also has a bumper sticker, of course, a hype sticker, which I always love, and several prints. Okay, so I'm going to show you the contents of the set real quick. And uh, here, let's just show off the uh, lenticular cover, first of all. So we get the dagger shattering the diamond heart. And now uh, let's dig into the set a little bit. Now, it has been said uh, by some that they don't really like the artwork and also don't really like the, the title of the album, but I think both are cool. Hackney Diamonds. It is sort of an oxymoron, like a Led Zeppelin or an Iron Butterfly, and I always appreciate that sort of thing in, uh, you know, band names or in, you know, album titles. Hackney Diamonds is a colloquialism for a shattered windscreen or windshield, and, um, you know, a Hackney is a pony or a horse that draws a carriage, and in slang, it refers to something vulgar or commonplace. So Hackney diamonds. Diamonds should never be commonplace, and so how could they be? Perhaps if we come to take them for granted, and maybe diamonds are a metaphor for life and for love and other forms of relationships, you know, things that we should value, but they somehow become commonplace and even vulgar. So in my opinion, the uh, the artwork gets a win. Here is a look at the uh, booklet, you know, the sleeve, I guess, that holds the uh, CD and Blu-ray. And I am happy as usual that the Blu-ray gets its own cardboard sleeve. I have a special section on my uh, bookshelves for discs with their own sleeves. So this will probably reside there and uh, that might help it get played more often since I don't have to pull out the entire set. So let's take a look at these prints. You get the uh, crystalline, the, the, the glass, the Hackney Diamond, Rolling Stones famous tongue icon. Get a fist smashing down. Get a depiction of the cover here. Pre-stab or mid-stab, you know, before the, the heart is completely shattered. So cool, cool. Not essential, but, you know, the inside of the sleeve that houses the discs. So the CD is just kind of there on its own. And uh, mine came shipped with that disc shoved pretty far down. So it was a bit of a delicate process to extract it, but I'll enjoy cranking this in the car. So I actually enjoy um, CDs. And then uh, just nothing special on the back there. And then this book, I actually really find this book to be pretty dang valuable. You get a depiction of the cover again. Nothing much going on on the back. Nice glossy paper. Rolling Stones. This is the um, the band title that you're going to see on the uh, Blu-ray menu. You get these pages that break out some text from the essay and something I found convenient in one of my early listens through the album was just to read these uh, breakout text pages. And it allowed me just to really mostly listen. You actually get quite a bit of information just from these text breakouts. And uh, band photos, of course. Here's Keith. It's quite a miracle that he's still with us. No makeup or wardrobe required for his role in Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Pirates of the Caribbean. How do you say it? We 
Ronnie. A lot of band photos, promo style photos in this book. In my opinion, very tastefully done. I really like this page. It reminds me of the uh, the inner sleeve for Moving Pictures by Rush. Get a little bit of tripping going on there. <laughs> you get a song by song write up, and if you want a really good song by song video, I recommend my buddy Barry's review of this album on his YouTube channel, Classic Album Reviews. He does such an eloquent job, and I'm just not going to try to compete with that. So you can read the track by track in the book. You can watch Barry's video. He always does just a fantastic job. Another page of band pictures. Plus supporting musicians. And then you get lyric pages for each song, which I found to be helpful, actually to ward off those misheard lyrics. You get some explicit lyrics on this album. I found the credits pages to be particularly helpful given that you have three official members of Rolling Stones right now, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, and Ronnie Wood. You also have two other Rolling Stones appearing on two tracks. That would be Charlie Watts, and then one track being Bill Wyman. And then you have quite a, a host of guest artists and you know studio musicians and then musicians that are touring with the band and helping out on the album you have elton john on a couple of tracks you have stevie wonder on a track you have paul mccartney on a track and you have lady gaga on a track and i'm not going to give a rundown of like every supporting musician but very notably you have Steve Jordan playing drums on the tracks Charlie Watts doesn't appear on. And um, I, I note him because I recently got turned on to his playing because my very, very dear friend, Mark Doyle, was very fortunate to enlist Steve to drum on an upcoming Mark Doyle album called Out of the Past 2. And I really dig Out of the Past 1 and also the live concert video of Out of the Past, which you can find on Mark Doyle's website. And I am genuinely thrilled that Out of the Past 2 is coming out. I've been following Mark as he has done some studio tracking with like a symphony orchestra and then also tracking Steve Jordan on drums and um, been able to hear you know, some preview clips and to read a description of just how that studio time went for Mark and Steve. And I'm just super excited. Uh, I think out of the past two is going to be, is going to be pretty cool. So it was, it was really interesting for me to learn that he also appears on this new Rolling Stones record. And in my opinion, he does an absolutely fabulous job. This album features some really sick grooves. The two Charlie Watts songs are no exceptions, but the the songs uh, for which Steve Jordan covers drum duties are just also just really, really, really well grooving. You have a huge variety of styles and feels on this album, from country rock to hard rock. You have ballads. You've got power pop. You've got blues, and um, every track to me feels musically extremely well done. There's only one track that I think for me ultimately will, will be a skipper, and that's really due to Mick Jagger's lyrics. If I'm Andrew Watt, the producer of the record, I probably either cut that track or at least send Mick Jagger back to the drawing board for his lyrics. And I realized that both would be just ridiculously tough to do and maybe nigh on impossible. So I get that. But, you know, having said that there's a skipper here for me, and that is Live by the Sword. That is also a track that happens to feature Charlie Watts, 
Bill Wyman and Elton John. So, you know, there's plenty there to, to capture some interest. I just find some of the lyrics to be a bit cringy while some of the other lyrics in the, in the tune are just kind of fun and funny. So, um, a little bit of a mixed bag. This is a very strong album musically, in my opinion. It holds together very well. This this one track that, you know, doesn't quite work for me, notwithstanding. This is a very, very strong album. A lot of reviewers already agree with that. The band agrees with that. They call out uh, the cohesion, you know, in, uh, given that they focused in, in a very brief period of time as far as how they work is concerned. They, they focused, they um, let Andrew Watt direct them and just keep them motivated and keep them on task and to keep them on schedule. They did these tracks, uh, they, they formed these tracks mainly live together and um, were just very rapid with, with overdub work and just really didn't let this album languish. There are uh, a couple of cuts that uh, date back a few years in their origin, but then they were uh, mostly reworked together, you know, in this new, fresh, modern setting. Uh, a couple of them, you know, feature Charlie Watts and, um, you know, one of them features Bill Wyman. And I believe those recordings are a little bit older, but only a few years. So, you know, we're not talking about any ancient cuts from the vault that are dusted off here. Uh, I consider this album to be pretty strong. It's it's consistent. It does feel modern, but it also reaches back to the Rolling Stones core sound and root sounds. Um, they finished this album with, you know, a blues cut that's Mick on blues harp, Keith on blues acoustic guitar, and, you know, Mick belting out, you know, a bluesy vocal, uh, you know, kind of drawling it and slurring it and it's just great and it happens to be the song from whence they got their name and so um you know there's some speculation out there that maybe that was the rolling stones way of saying this is the last album that they finally have delivered up for us rolling stone blues and you know maybe that is a, a signal that this is that this is it you know in a in a very poignant sense like how Rush, you know, ended their last studio album with The Garden about reflecting back on your life. And then it wasn't too long after that Neil Peart was gone and and that ended up being, you know, the, the last Rush effort. So we shall see. Now let's talk about the Atmos mix. This is a Giles Martin Atmos mix. And right off the bat, that is going to cause some hate. Haters going to hate. And listen, I understand that Giles Martin has produced some frustratingly tame Beatles material. I'm looking at you, plus one. Just some some criminally tame material, okay? But he also has produced some really, really, really fantastic Beatles immersive material like Abbey Road and Let It Be. And in my opinion, he's done some some really some really good work in the immersive uh, arena with with some other groups like NXS. There are some people who think that Kick is a little too tame, but I don't. And look, uh, there are folks out there that if it isn't a Stephen Wilson Atmos mix, they just really write it off, you know, without, <laughs> out in my opinion, giving it a fair shake. But not every mixing engineer is Stephen Wilson. You know, there's Bob Clear Mountain. There's Bruce Sword, Richard Chickey, Giles Martin, and of course, Stephen Wilson too. They all have their own styles and some of those styles are going to land better or worse, you know, depending on the listener. And some styles I think are going to fit material better than others. There is no crazy panning going on uh, with this record. The surrounds mainly are the um, resting place of some rhythm guitar parts, lots of background vocals, some percussion, and quite a bit of ambience. I am pleased to note that the center channel is used to, in my opinion, very great effect. 
reinforcing lead vocals, snare, and kick drums. So we definitely don't have, you know, a silent center here. This mix fills the room. Uh, on the Rolling Stones, more um, rambunctious, you know, arena rock, hard rock, you know, heavy hitting tracks. You're not going to be wowed by, you know, uh, stuff just dancing all around in the Atmos. But there are some standout Atmos tracks, particularly the tracks that are a bit more laid back and don't feature, you know, super loud guitars and drums. But all of the parts get a chance to breathe a bit better. Those being Depending on You, which happens to be one of my favorite songs from the record, Dreamy Skies, and Sounds of Heaven. So if you are curious whether you are going to take well to the Atmos mix here, it is streaming in Atmos on Apple Music. And so I suspect it would also be on Tidal, possibly on Amazon Music. And I'm not sure if there are other streaming services offering Atmos Music at this time, but uh, maybe. So, you know, you can audition this music in stereo in a variety of ways to see if the album is a fit for you, you can addition the Atmos mix to see if the mix is for you. If you are like me and you are very, very much into immersive music, but perhaps picky about what you're willing to spend your money on. This set is not super duper cheap, though I have uh, seen some friends snag this thing for a pretty good deal in recent days. I paid quite a bit. I wanted to be an early adopter and I wanted to um, throw some support to uh, a website that I, I like quite a lot. But if you look around, this is still for sale. It's not out of print and uh, there are some deals to be had. And if you find a, a good deal, I um, am confident that this is a set that delivers quite a bit of value. 48 minutes doesn't outstay its welcome. And in my opinion, you have the Rolling Stones essentially returning to form. I agree with other reviewers that this is the strongest effort in a great many years, at least since the Bigger Bang, which you know goes back, what, to like 2005 or so. So we, we have a strong effort. In my opinion, this is a good listen. It um, is one that has really... Um, kept my interest across, I think I, I've done like around five listens now, and I am ready to move on to some other albums, but this is going to stay in rotation. So in my opinion, this is a win. Now, um, final thoughts about uh, the Atmos mix. As I've said in other videos, I am currently listening on a 7.2.4 Atmos array. That's, you know, pretty much, you know, the, the full Atmos array for your home. And this mix is very effective for me. The uh, one criticism I would offer would be, I wish the two tracks on which Elton John appears would showcase his playing a bit better. It's not like he's buried in the mix, but um, I just feel like he could have been given a little bit more breathing room. Fortunately, the track that Stevie Wonder appears on does give him lots of space especially when that song seems to end but then they extend it with a jam and you get just some very tasty work by uh, Mr. Stevie Wonder and it's just such a delight to hear him do his thing so in my opinion we have a, a strong collection of songs we have a suitable Atmos mix I happen to have also heard this album in stereo and I think that works fine as well we have um, CD, Blu-ray set, which suits me just fine. We have a well-done, well-curated, and you know, informative and succinct book. And yeah, so this set is a win for me. I uh, am a, but basically a child of the musical '90s. So you know, Rolling Stones for me started out as like an arena rock group. So. I may be able to take to this musically uh, a bit better than some other, you know, longer time and very hardcore Rolling Stones fans. But, you know, like I said, you can addition the music for yourself, decide on the music for yourself. The Atmos mix gets a thumbs up from me. Your mileage may vary. Uh, your system 
doubtless varies, right? And your tastes and your expectations probably vary. So take it for what it's worth. I have enjoyed several listens in Atmos to this album and it's it continues to grow on me. Uh, you get Mick Jagger, you know, just with um, just every bit as much a vicious sneer in his voice as ever. Um, these guys just sound very vital. You know, Keith's playing and uh, Ronnie's playing um, as much as ever, you know, just really blending together. You never know what Ronnie or Keith are doing, you know, on their own because they're they're just they're a unit. And uh, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, Steve Jordan, and and many, many others in support. You know, this is an album just extremely well done. I think it is going to take you back on certain tracks, you know, to classic Rolling Stones territory while sounding fresh, sounding modern. So I think that's enough about this record, at least for now. I appreciate you watching. If you like what I do, don't forget to like subscribe, ring the notification bell, leave your comments. What do you think about this album? What do you think about the deluxe set? If you um, have been fortunate enough to obtain it and to listen and, you know, share this video if you feel so inclined um, uh, in any appropriate way. And above all else, live life in surround.